I've had a bit of a read. Um, uh, the the service manual and what have you, like I might have said before, uh, neglects this entire board um, with minor references to, to various things like there's bits and pieces for the LEDs. So that's the next thing I'm going to start measuring. Um, I had 24 volts over here and these are all supposed to be um, be fed with uh, 24 volts um, uh, either end of these connectors. So there's two connectors and both have 24 volts on either end. Um, and I've cheated already because I already know that it's that's a, that's a problem. Uh, I've uh, got ditched this ditched the plastic sh sheet and gone to a little plastic bottle which I've pressurised. You hear that ring? That means it's pressurised. Um, that's so I can rest my arm as I'm leaning across there and not kill myself. The awakening. You know. All right, so nothing's plugged in. Sorry, the, main, the mains cable's not plugged in. Standby power is off. We can uh, check over here. I've put some red marks on here to make, help me find those standby voltages, three and a half volts easier. And uh, I stand to be corrected too. I think I said this was a common mode choke. I've, I've uh, took, took a look underneath the motherboard and I've put it all back together again. I've taken shots of the underside. This is uh, power factor correction. It's not a common mode choke. It's the correct um, um, power factors. Um, and I believe it's being driven by this, 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 this bank. This and this coil these capacitors um, are driving a separate 24 volts to the ones over here and, and you, we will see shortly that they're in error. So on the power in, no sparks. Oh the other thing I've done since then is I've, I've turned on my crow and I've put an earthing strap between the, 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 the earth on the, on the crow. So let's start off. Uh, so we've got the red light is on. We should have three and a half volts here. All right. So we've got our three and a half volts here. Yes. And we had a 24 volts somewhere along there, which is. Uh, the second one then from this side. That's off. Alright, so let's switch it on. And we should now get both the power on, just three and a half and the 24 volts. Yes we do. Now let's go over over to here. Either end of those connectors is supposed to be 24 volts. It's 36. Terrible. So definitely not 24 volts. This is earth, I believe. Yep. And I haven't quite figured this one out. I think it's I think it's a center tapped coil. Not completely certain on what I have to trace the circuit out. Um, this is earth. And this is a MOSFET here, and that's a diode. And uh, it's a common cathode, I believe, it's, which has to be 36 volts there, yes. And, and these are the capacitor, fill the capacitors for those, yes. And that's being fed from secondary of this guy. Uh, and from memory, Right, so there's 36.6. Right. 36.25. So it's like point 
one diode drop difference. And the Schottky diode difference. Which is probably 36.6. And there's the Schottky diode there. So, um, um, and now the rest of the circuitry is on the underside, and uh, uh, the bits that I need are actually on the under surface mount on the underside of this damn heatsink. So, it's not going to be easy. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to attempt to try to power it um, with the board loose. I did my best to try and find some um, some top side measurement points um, for one of the chips in there, which is driving the, uh, the PWM. Which I should have this circuit diagram schematic still up somewhere. No, I don't. Should be able to find it again. <sighs> Anyway, let's 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 pull the board out. So let's uh, let's turn it off there. Oh, unplug it. The other thing is, is is that the standby on this thing runs forever, absolutely forever. Uh, you can still see. So the, the way the way I'll be doing is switching power on again. Eventually, discharges all of the caps. On the main side, we've got these ones. And right, so they're all discharged. Unplugged, I've got my chassis, it's still connected, so... In addition to the clips, it's a, it's a bit taut. I suppose it's a 2011 model. Strap here and an earthing strap here. It's a different bolt there, but every, all the other bolts are the same. So. Well, actually, before we go that far, I'll tell you it's correct. Let's. let's see if we can. Uh, Well, we've already, through measurement, we've already electro a voltage measurement that that diode should be fine. Uh, let's see if I can figure out how to use this diode check. Cool. Right, it's a common cathode. Either side of that diode, 0.35. There we go. 354. I'm always, <laughs> I'm always a bit dubious, even though I've measured it as they've always I'm a bit suspicious. Now that was, that was a uh, MOSFET. It's an ST, uh, a 19NF20, a 200 volt, 0.16 ohm, 15 amp, 25 watt is it? Or 90 watt? I think it's the, I think it's the 220 metal package so probably 90 watt MOSFET and see the screen so it goes uh, with the metal package is upside down so the faces the metal tabs on the top the faces on the other side so 
this would be pin 1, and pin 1 is the gate. And the center 1 is, is also the tab, and that's the, the drain. And number 3 is the source. So, so this, will be, this will be the drive from the circuitry on, on the other side. Um, and this should be... Oh. Oh, that, oh, that's right. Now I remember when I tracing the circuit, there was another transistor on the uh, a surface mount transistor. That might be that. Right. So if we go between drain and source, we've got that's seven miles. and there should be a reverse body. Okay, that's the reverse body diode. Confirm that. Um, the drain, drain is tab, black is on the center. Yep. Okay, so that's the cathode. So that's the body diode. So the body diode's okay. We've got some issue, possibly. Well, there's not, not resistance because we just, it, it, it's, uh, we can check that there's check that not resistance. Those because we have different readings in two different directions. 3k that way and three K that way. So it's probably the, the drive. The MOSFET's probably fine, it's probably that, that little transistor or it might even be the IC. Let's continue. Alright, so we've already taken that screw out, put it into there, and now we've got the remaining, what, five, I think? Six, yeah, so we five. These these are have been machined. Make any difference? Can you see? Um, this this um, board design has got cut out, so you, but that's, that was that the, 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 uh, the secondary switching transformer. Uh, and those are, that's the choke for that 24 volt. And those are the capacitors for the 24 volts. And those are the two components, D53 and Q251. Okay. Uh, that chip there, that 8 pin SO8. It's a high performance current mode pulse width modulation controller. Uh, oscillated frequency guaranteed at 256 kilohertz. Current mode operation to 500 kilohertz. Uh, yada yada yada. So totem pole outputs. Unusual. So pin eight is a five volt reference. Pin seven is um, V in. Uh, pin five is the ground. And pin. The output, totem pole output was pin 6, uh, which should be going, end up going to the, um, to the 
MOSFET. So that was the drive, so that's going into there. Across a. I'm going to take a look at those photos. Yeah, okay, that cross a 470 ohm by the looks of it. Should be 470 ohms. Can get my leads to work. Forty-seven ohms. Did I misread or the, the photo is not particularly good? Oh, it's a zero. Yeah, okay. Forty-seven ohms. Okay, and that thing, so there's, there's our, uh, I've lost it again, I'm, I'm looking at the photos because I, I can't look at the, at this oblique angle on the actual device, so there's our transistor, can't read the number of it on the photo, that's a, uh, Down. Okay, so yeah, that's going across that transistor. There's a diode, and that then goes through that resistor, which is another 4.7, I believe. So that's got 470, and that's got 4R7 written on it. Consistency, eh? yeah, it's another 4.79 ohms. That then goes up to here. Oh, and there's a trace going off under there. The pin six. Okay, so that's pin six, 4.7. underneath does it? Seven. Seven. Let's go to diode check. Diode. <sighs> Seven volts that way. And one volt that way. Six. And one point eight. Okay, guys. So uh, I've uh, spent quite a quite a, um, a great deal of time um, re reversing the uh, the circuit for this this, this the the, uh, the backlight LEDs. <coughs> uh, I was confused by a lot of the circuitry on there, you know, based on what I the mental picture that I had. Um, and uh, I've pretty much reversed the, the major portion of the the, um, the backlight LED power circuit, um, and and it's become obvious there's been some misconceptions that I've had along the way. For some reason, I don't know why, uh, but I thought uh, the backlight LEDs were running off 24 volts. Um, I've tried to go back and figure out where that happened, but uh, for the life of me I can't. Um, the dead giveaway was is when I was looking at the, the main board printed on the, uh, well there's two dead giveaways, one, one was when I traced the circuit out it, it wasn't a buck converter, it was a boost converter, uh, so if you, if you remember the, um, 
the supply voltage for the converter was 36 something volts and so I was expecting a buck converter taking it down to 24 instead what I saw was a boost converter I thought what the hell maybe maybe I'm getting seen or, or getting my bucks and boosts mixed up but the dead giveaway was printed on the board there it tells you um, the supply voltages that this board provides um, so it provides 3.5 volts at 1.8 amps, uh, 12 volts uh, at 2.8 amps, 24 volts at 1.2 amps, and 59.2 volts at 1.6 amps. So clearly that um, uh, boost converter uh, is uh, taking it up from 36 odd volts up to 59.2. The second part of the problem is um, in tracing the circuit out, I've the, uh, I've been using the, the component labels and they're not particularly well uh, readable and so a, a combination of, of trying to interpret the, the, the writing on the components and measuring in circuit um, I'm still confused as to how the hell the, the circuit configuration gets it up to 59.2 assuming that there's no fault um, you know, in terms of the, the voltage feedback resistance and the rest of it I'll, I'll, I'll give you, I'll, I'll insert the um, uh, a bitmap of uh, the circuit as I've done it so far. Um, you know, like I've noted on the circuit diagram some, some oddities that I've come across and uh, things, and things that I've recognised, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and there's two uh, uh, digital pin connections, one to IC701, pin 18, and the other to IC801, pin 8. Um, uh, the, the latter one is an ASIC and the, the early one is an STM S103, which I'm pretty, uh, sorry, an STM8 S103, which, you know, which is an STM8 microcontrol um, uh, on the board, that is. That's the, uh, the microcontroller and that's the ASIC. Uh, so one of them goes from pin A and the other one is about there and it goes over. Now the, uh, the one from the microcontroller uh, has a bunch of jumpers that I can measure from the top side. So uh, jumpers 70, 82 and 86 in theory 86. 86 is actually hiding in underneath that heatsink and it is just accessible if I recall. <sighs> Sorry. Um, so the, uh, the, the chip that's doing the, uh, um, uh, the boost conversion is a, a UC2843B IC251. Uh, it's a surface mount SO8 on the on the under on the underside. Just there. Just there. And there's a bunch of uh, switching circuits. Sorry, there's a bunch of diodes around it. Uh, one one that uh, one that's concerning me, and I suspect is the part of the problem at least. Um, is the supply voltage to that chip, to that PWM chip. Um, it's um, through transistors, uh, well the main pass transistor is a PNP Q252 uh, feeding through a 4.7 ohm resistor to capacitor to um, C278 which is a 22 microfarad. There's two 22 microfarad capacitors just on the edge of that heatsink. 278 ones closest to us. Um, what I was trying to do was to slip a lead under the the, the, uh, the capacitor, but you know, like a wire wrap wire, um, trying to trying to slip 
put some wire wrap right, wire under the thing, but uh, nothing doing. So what I'm going to do now is, is uh, I'm going to solder some wires on and um, continue my investigation. Okay, so I've just put in two wires. Um, it's a wire wrap wire soldered and um, some heat shrink just to give me some additional electrical thing. So I've put the red one onto the, the positive side of uh, C278. So that should be the um, the switched side going to the, the the plus rail, the plus 12 volt rail on the uh, the PWM chip, and then I've got the white uh, wire on the um, um, microcontroller side, which is switching the the transistors to turn on the power for the PWM. So I've got that on the on the STM8 output pin. Now I'll just um, uh, Put it all back together again and uh, start measuring. I'll cut it all back together again. The mains is plugged in. The light is on solid. Uh, I'm checking the, the controller output first of all. So currently at zero volts. So hit the power button. And we get one. That should be, if you're looking at the circuit right, it's going into an NPN and then driving a PMP. And the, the collector of the PMP should be on the output voltage, and that's the red wire, so I'll just go to that now. Make sure I don't short anything. Yeah, that's the red wire, and we've got one and a half volts. So that is just that's on the across the uh, the, the two C 278 22 microfarad. So 1.2 volts is probably coming in from the protection diodes. I would expect on the controller chip, maybe. So where's the, the next set of voltage coming in? So the voltage could be coming in through the feedback on pin 2, I'd expect, uh, which is on the resistor divider. And the output of that goes to that uh, J86, which is sitting underneath there. Um, do I want to? We've got mains on this side. I've got my little bottle to help remind me not to put my hand on it. One little torch gone. 86 is up there somewhere. Yeah, that's that one, that little one underneath there. So, let me unplug this. And we want from the lead back over this way. So I shouldn't have to worry about that touching the mains. Um, I'm a little bit cautious about touching the other main things. So let's, um, let's, let's use this little thing. This is just basically just a, a, a little, little wire hook. Yes, no. It's just, a, it's just a, a bit of wire that I've made into a hook and put some heat shrink around. And I'll just put it into the um, into the little little lead. Actually, what I'll do, actually, what I'll do is I'll, I'll use the the little protector and I'll wedge it. I'll wrap it around the lead or use this to clamp it. There we go. That should work. Let's see, that's the three and a half volts. Three and a half volts has got a hook on it. I want to be careful with it. I don't touch anything else with that hook. With the bar. Three and a half, 
good. It's very good. Now, we want to touch that 86. That should be the V ref. I don't think there's any major voltages there. 2.1. Yeah, so that's the feedback. I can get to there's two there's two sets of resistors, a 12k and a 5 510 in theory. That's those are the um, two that I had some or well, that's just some of the resistors I had trouble measuring in circuit. Um, so and there's a bunch of Capacitors there, and it goes to link J82 and J70. 82, I believe. I believe we're around here somewhere. From the heat sink we've got J75, 78 and then 82 and it's a little bit offset so I can use that to my advantage. 2.1. So um, 2.115. So that's the feedback voltage. And it's low because the um, uh, the um, the the um, PWM chip has a voltage. Uh, 5 volt reference built in that the feedback is it is half all right well let's um so we've got the cry all right so my earth is still hooked up to the chassis on there onto the chassis on there i've got my little probe leads on the 10 to 1 and i've got it at 20 volts of division at the moment 10 to 1 yeah uh, we want to take a look at the, the input to the to that diode or not. Diode 253, so the two inner ones will be the incoming voltage from the boost converter. I'm not going to show them big here in one, no. And uh, right, right, right. Channel one. I'm not sure what time division we're on, but I need to know sparks. And it looks like a DC voltage. Some noise on it. Uh, if there's any switching going in, that's that's on the um, the anode side of the the switching diodes. Um, so that's um, the MOSFET is switching through that coil. And Output of the coil, or one of the the, um, the low side of the coil that's going into the, the anodes of that dual diode, and they, it's got a common cathode. The common cathode, the center leak, which is sticking out further, that's then going to the to the filters. So, and I think as I me measured earlier, it was just a 0.3 of a volt difference between the anode and cathode, which is the the diode drop. So, and the crow doesn't show any switching going on there at all. I suppose I could go into, oh it was DC connected, I suppose I could go to AC connection. Uh, page 2, I want to go to page 1, I want to go to AC coupling. And take our voltage down to 5 volts per division. Quick look, I'm not sure enough. I've got to use my little bottle to help me leverage. Okay, anode, nothing. Uh, let's go down to uh, 1 volt per division. Okay, nothing. Alright, so I'm pretty sure that, uh, pretty certain it's not switching at all. So for some reason the um, uh, the microcontroller isn't switching at all. So we're probably chasing a red herring here. Uh, it's probably not a power supply issue because it's switched off. Um, it's that microprocessor um, um, uh, that isn't switching on the uh, the LED drive.
of the, the LED backlight power circuit. So there's, a, there's another problem. So I need to act, need to try and get some condition codes or something from somewhere. Back to the drawing board on that one, I think.